Alright, so I've been meaning to do this for a while now. Um, I've reboxed my Fire Dragon just so we can have a kind of unboxing review thing. Um, the box did come a bit crumpled, but that's fine. Um, it came via EMS China postage. Um, it took six days to arrive, which isn't too bad from China. Um, kind of the average uh, seven day postage. So, um, yep, let's open this up. Now, inside here was a lot of packing peanuts, but I'm not going to put them back in just for the review. So, inside there, there's a second box here. On the box, it has the USA plug. So, they didn't really change it over for us Australians. Um, let's open this up. <coughs> and probably people with a keen eye would, uh, would pick up on the Dino Direct sticker that's on the, on the box. Dino Direct taping, sorry. Um, there's a quality control sticker there as well. Now you open that up, let's just move this forward a bit. Um, so once we open this up, you have this nice protective layer here. Fold this open and we can see that our laser here is in uh, antistatic bubble wrap, looks like it. Uh, just set that aside for now. And uh, just under this compartment here, we have uh, Ultrafire 18650 battery, 2400 milliamp hour 3.7 volt battery. It's good that they're using actual brand name batteries with their laser, so that's good. Um, next is a one slot 18650 battery charger. Fits well, looks like it'll work fine. Um, again, only came with the US plug, no adapter in the box. So let's move this aside and get to the laser. So this is the Fire Dragon 3, um, 300 milliwatt version uh, that laser mans have on their site. Um, it is wrapped twice. See if we can zoom out a bit. Oh, sorry. All right, so it's wrapped twice here in the bubble wrap. Now, when I opened this up, I got a bit of a surprise here. It said 500 milliwatts uh, version here. I don't know if that's backwards or if that's just me. Um, 500 milliwatt version here, and I got a bit ex excited. Um, so this is the laser itself, it's quite chunky, big, nice threads, very very smooth, no crunching, no hard spots, anything like that. And that's the tail cap there, nice big chunk of aluminium, heavy, heavy duty kind of high quality stuff here. Um, we also, I don't know if you can see in there. It's good quality PCB. Um, yeah, nothing wrong there, as you can see. Uh, you have a aperture shutter here, just at the front, and that's about it. And we also have a LED indicator light that comes on around the the switch here. All right, so the key advantages with this is there is a key switch you get two sets of keys with your laser um, you put it in obviously and twist it to turn on and you can remove the key now the laser is armed um, once the laser is armed you can push the moment uh, sorry the clicky button here uh, for constant on or constant off um, once it's on you can just tap it for a momentary off and then click it for, you know, constant off. Aperture shutters, um, quite 
well done. It's uh, nice and smooth, no crunching, no, you know, nothing wrong that I can see there. You can actually remove this whole front cover here. And uh, you can see the mechanism inside, moving from side to side. Quite a normal setup, usually how it's done. Um, and you can also see on the inside here the um, the lens. That's the final lens um, before the output of the laser. So yeah, that's adjustable, but it has a dub of glue in there to stop you from rattling or moving around. Another good thing that you can see um, between the Chinese type cheap lasers and good quality lasers um, is rattling parts. So if you just give that a shake, there's no noise coming out of that at all. So that's a good thing. Um, really, just before I turn this on, the only downside that I can see to this laser is very very touchy on off button um, I was the other day I had my key switch in turned on and um, and I grabbed the laser just like this and my hand must have been resting just very very lightly on the button but as I was pushing this forward the shutter forward it I applied just enough pressure to just barely touched the switch and the laser turned on and it was pointing almost directly straight at my face um, it must have just skimmed the top of my forehead and missed my eyes by very very close so that's a definite thing that I would like changed or um, at least you know have have a much harder click because um, yeah, just a tiny little touch and it's making contact. So that's only, that 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 modification is only on to the PCB. It'll only need um, you know a different different part for the switch instead of um, instead of what it's using right now. So let's uh, go through the steps to turn this laser on. First, you want to take the end cap off. Now with most screens, well pretty much all greens it's always going to be um, positive and uh, pos case positive which means negative end in first and positive end facing towards the end of the laser so the the switch side so that'll just go straight into there screw in and again no rattling no shaking battery feels like it's being held in perfectly um, as you can see there's no LED being shown um, that means that your laser is not armed. So to arm it, you need to put your key in and twist 90 degrees. Okay, now I don't know how well that's going to pick up on camera, but there's now a blue LED around that button. Um, okay, the next thing you want to do is open up, making sure your hand is not anywhere near that button. So hold the top of the laser and slide that open. So now your laser is ready to go once you push the button. So once you push the button, your laser is on. Uh, you should see a red LED indicating emission is on and your laser is ready to go. Okay. Um, now, these are notorious for very... I won't, uh, I won't go as far to say as very unstable, but not a stable output from these lasers. Um, they're also very over spec. Now th this one's rated for 300 milliwatts. Um, I LPM'd this and uh, I'm not sure how well that'll come out but its peak was at 628 milliwatts for a 300 milliwatt version. Its average for the whole duration, 3 minute duration, was 487 which is still almost you know almost double sorry um, almost 200 milliwatts over spec which is crazy but um, you can see it ramp up time and within probably 
30 seconds, it'll it'll be at its peak, 628 milliwatts. Then, as the the temperature and laser starts to st stabilize, it'll drop down to around 490, 480, around there. I think that was about 460 was the lowest it got to. Um, and yeah, you just get a very dancey line like that. Um, I then tried out with a uh, with a better name brand, a GTL battery, um, and that peak was 597. Um, I think that's got to do with the with the protection circuit inbuilt into the battery. So um, yeah, that only regulates, uh, well, allows less current to flow, so you won't get such a high peak. This also was from a warm start. So um, coming back to this one, this was from a cold start. So from this is the first time I turned it on in about two days. Uh, peaked at 6.28. Um, this was a warm start, peaked at 5.97. So this is good. Um, and you can see a lot less dancing, more, m much closer to the, to the average output. And then lastly, I tried with a different um, battery. I tried with a, a laptop battery, a used laptop battery. And again, um, uh, yeah, much stabler output once, um, once it's, you know, finished peaking. And yeah, it just followed the, the average line quite, quite well. Um, for some reason, it peaked at only 406, 494 on the laptop battery. I think that's because obviously it's, it's not designed for this kind of high, high current output. Well, at least not, you know, constant kind of thing. Um, yeah, so this is, um, that's your peak of 494. Now if we turn back to the laser, um, we'll just dismantle this. Um, I think the best thing we can do is turn this off at the moment. So um, we have a danger warning symbol right here. 532 nanometers, class 3B. It's about all that it says on, on the sticker here. Now if you just give it a quick turn, you can, uh, you can dismantle this laser quite easily and take the head off. The good thing I like about this laser is the very long threads makes things very easy to do um, and you know you can get better quality threads if you have a longer thread and whatever. Anyway, so this is the module that's in mine. It's the ED155 if that means anything to anyone um, and you can see the illuminating lens just there on top, glued on top. Uh, this is IR filtered and it's guaranteed 300 milliwatts output from here, from this spot. Um, once you put this on top, obviously, you get a much more illuminated lens, you can get much better output. Alright, so that's about it for now. Um, great laser for the price. Um, really, the only downfall I can see for this is uh, is the is the button and it does have a bit of a divergence problem not too bad for the average user but for someone who wants um, you know very good divergence or you know a, a thin beam maybe this isn't the laser for you um, but I I can't complain it is a great laser I love it and it does the job thank you